a pretty good representation of stuff you might have already seen, stuff you may already have. On the left here, we have uh, an older model Ernie Ball. This is just a regular pot pedal. Here we have a Fender uh, multi pedal, so this actually does tone and volume. Uh, this is kind of more intended for a non-pedal steel, but uh, you can use it with a pedal steel, although it won't work with a matchbox, but we can talk about that later in another video. Next, we have a Franklin Stereo, just a regular pot pedal, but it's a stereo. Next is an Emmons regular pot pedal. This is like what you would see that came with a lot of the older Emmons guitars. Very common volume pedal, and they, they sound great. And next, we have a, a Hilton. Um, this is the type of pedal that I actually use, and this is an active pedal. Um, the rest of them are pop pedals, and I am going to do another video kind of explaining exactly what an active pedal does, how it works. But for this video, we're just going to talk about the main differences between using a pop pedal and an active pedal. These are all fine choices, but this is a pretty good representation of, of what's out there and some type of stuff you may have seen already. Okay, so you got the steel, now it's time to pick out the right volume pedal. Or maybe you've already been playing and you just maybe want to upgrade to a different type of volume pedal if you're not happy with what you got. So first up, you're going to notice that you're going to see passive and active pedals. Now a passive pedal is basically just a regular pot pedal. It runs off of a potentiometer, no different than the volume pot that's in your guitar, whatever. And that's the classic style of volume pedal. And then next you're going to have several types of active pedal. These require power, they have to be plugged into the wall. Um, they do not use pots, they generally use some type of optics or infrared, some type of tracking system to allow the pedal to determine the amount of output that the pedal gives. So basically, they both do the same thing, they just do it in a completely different way. One of them is more classic, the other is more modern. So first off, when you're picking out a pedal, there's really five main kind of players I'm gonna talk about here. One of them is is a proprietary. If you bought, let's say, a Showbud or an image or something like that, it's very possible that it did come with a volume pedal. The next is gonna be Ernie Ball. The next is gonna be Goodrich. The next is gonna be Hilton. And then we're gonna talk about the Talonics, lastly. So let's start with the proprietary. So most likely, this is gonna be a pot pedal, passive pedal. Lots of old Showbuds still have the volume pedals with them. Lots of old Emmonses do, and, and many other manufacturers as well. So if these pedals are working, you know, they do work off of pots, they can become dirty, the strings can break. So, you know, lots of times they're not working properly, but if you do have one that is working properly, they do have a great sound, especially if you're wanting to go with that classic tone. If you want to sound like Lloyd Green, if you want to sound like these guys from the 70s and the 60s, I mean, these are the type of pedals they were using. So that's a very good first step. I will say that they are quite large. So modern pedals have become much smaller. So if you're a tall guy like me, you might need to consider using some type of smaller pedal. If you find like say a showbud pedal secondhand online you know people tend to ask in my opinion a little bit too much for them they're usually somewhere between the 150 to 250 mark used but lots of times if you pick up an old showbud or an old emmons at a music shop or from somebody online there's a very strong possibility it does have the volume pedal with it so if you've got it especially the emmons pedal it sounds absolutely great if you've got one feel free to give it a shot and see if it's right for you next we're going to talk about ernie ball so it's kind of unfortunate that ernie ball doesn't have a more specified pedal steel volume pedal considering you know the late Ernie Ball his huge connection to the steel guitar but what they do have is just the basic Ernie Ball volume pedal this is a classic volume pedal that you can find at any of your major big box retailers it's very common and in my experience lots of times when guys are starting out this is the type of pedal that they end up with either because they've already got one or it's one of the easiest ones to find this is also just a regular passive pot pedal but it is not designed to be played with the pedal steel now it is just a volume pedal it'll work with any instrument that you choose but what I mean is that the movement is not great. It's a little bit too stiff. It's inconsistent for pedal steel. The sweep is not as strong as it should be. You know, they use cheap pots. They're not extremely reliable. They do break somewhat easy compared to other volume pedals. But having said that, it is a classic pedal, especially if you can find one of the older ones secondhand. Those are, in my opinion, they sound better. The pots were better back then. You can usually find these secondhand for 40 to 50 bucks. And if you want to walk into your local you know, music store, I think they're going to run you about $100. And I believe they do offer a large and a small option, but I don't believe there's much different than the height. So it's not going to help you if you're 6'3". So the Ernie Ball, you know, it's a good option. It's not Premier. I would not want to use one. But hey, if that's what you got, they do work. 
Next, we're gonna talk about Goodrich. So Goodrich has been making pedal steel volume pedals for years. They're highly respected. Everybody in pedal steel circles knows Goodrich. If you go with a Goodrich, you show up to a gig, is another pedal steel player sees you, nobody's gonna look at you twice. You know, you can't go wrong with a Goodrich. Now, they do offer several different models. Some of them are passive and some of them are active. And they even offer an Omni model now, which is passive and active, which is really, really cool, kind of innovative. But what we're gonna talk about today is the Goodrich 120. And this is kind of the most common Goodrich volume pedal that you'll see out in the wild and they also make it in a regular profile and a low profile so if you're under six foot you're probably going to want to go with the regular profile if you're over six foot you're going to want to check out the low profile now the 120 is a tried and true classic pot pedal it is passive but it's a very good pedal compared to the earning ball especially every component is going to be more higher end the casing the pots all the components everything it's all made in america it's great stuff so the 120 is going to give you a much more consistent sound the stiffness is much better the taper is more accurate basically now we were getting into the volume pedals that were really intended for pedal steel and you know these are companies of guys who have sat and figured out how can we make the volume pedal for the pedal still better? So the Goodrich 120 is a very, very good option. It is a pot pedal, so you are gonna encounter a little bit of noise. The pots can go bad over time. They do have issues, but it is a great pedal. We're jumping into a little bit of a higher price range. You know, secondhand, you can usually find these for around $100 to $150, but retail, I think they're around $330 right now. But it is a great pedal, so you really can't go wrong with a Goodrich. Next, we're gonna talk about Hilton Electronics. So the Hilton is actually the type of pedal that I use, and this is gonna be our first active pedal that we're gonna talk about. Now, Keith Hilton doesn't offer a, a lot of different models. He keeps it really simple. He's got a low profile, a regular profile, and he also makes a active volume pedal that's intended for a guitar player. I'm not gonna discuss that one today because we're gonna stick with the pedal still stuff. But anyway, the Hilton Electronics pedal is a very, very good active pedal. So, you know, let's talk a little bit more about active pedals. You know, what, what are you gonna get out of it? Well, first, there's no pot in it. You're going to have to plug it in, but they are very, very accurate as far as the taper and the sweep goes. You're going to get the same amount of sustain at 10% that you're going to get at 100%. So very, very good sustain, very, very smooth sweep. You can adjust the cutoff point. The movement is very, very smooth. When I first started using a Hilton years ago, I had gone into a session, one of the first like real pro sessions I got to do as a steel player and I was still using my Goodrich 120. Playing live, I love that pedal, and I still carry it around with me sometimes, but you know, going into the studio, when you put everything under a microscope, you can really kind of start to hear some of that dirt and some of the, uh, you know, gristle and crunch that's in the pots. Now, you know, you got, you got yourself a brand new pot, it's gonna sound a lot better, but inherently, passive pedals are gonna be more noisy than an active pedal. So the Hilton, once again, we're jumping into a little bit of a higher price range. Secondhand, you can get them for about 225 to 250. If you wanna get one new, they retail for 289. I've been using mine for years. It has never broken and I couldn't be happier with it. So the Hilton, very, very good option. Make sure and check those out. Next, we're going to talk about the Talonix. Okay. So the Talonix FP100, I believe they call it a multi-taper. This is another active pedal. And now we're getting into the really kind of boutique high-end, super specialized pedal steel volume pedal. The Talonix is probably the heaviest hitter in the game right now of what it will do. I've never owned one, but I have played them several times and they're great pedals. You're going and get all of the sustain and consistency that you're going to get out of something like a Hilton, but you just get a few more options. They have more outputs. You can, you know, you have dedicated tuner outputs. You can run things in stereo. And also it's a multi-taper. And so the taper is basically going to be how quickly it's going to go from off to on and these type of things. With the multi-taper, I believe it's five different positions. So you can really customize this pedal to be perfect for you. Everybody kind of has a different sweep. Some people like to start further back and you can really adjust it and dial it into what feels right for you. Now, this is gonna be something that is gonna take a little bit of time. If you're a beginning player, you're not gonna know which taper is gonna be right for you. But as you develop your technique, especially with your right foot, you're gonna notice that maybe I'm swelling too quickly, maybe I'm doing this, maybe I'm doing that. And with the Talonix, you can adjust these type of things. So another very good option if you wanna swing it, it's a little bit too rich for my pay grade, you can pick them up used for about 400 to 450, I've seen them. And I believe they retail around the $600 mark. That price may have changed, but the last I checked, it was around 600 retail. But Talonix, you know, if you can swing it, go nuts because we're talking about the best of the best stuff here. So to recap, let's just talk about some pros and cons real quick. So the pros and cons of using a passive pedal, what are the pros? Well, one, they're very affordable. They're easy to find. You may already have one. Your guitar may have come with one and they're classic. You know, they're going to give you a classic sound. No fuss. You don't have to plug them in. What are some of the cons? Well, lots of times they don't come in a variety of sizes. So if you're over six foot, you might have trouble getting 
getting your right leg under the guitar, okay? Now that's not all passive pedals, but that's most of them. Also, they're noisy. The pots go bad over time, and even when they're brand new, there's still a mechanical movement noise that can come through, depending on your amp, depending on how loud you are, but they are noisy. They're not extremely consistent, and what I mean by that is your output at 10% versus your output at 100% is gonna have a different level of sustain, a different level of tone. There are ways to combat this. We're using things like matchboxes and stuff, and we can talk about that in another video, but this is just inherent of a passive pedal. So now let's talk about some pros and cons of an active pedal. What are the pros? They're extremely transparent. They're consistent. The sweep is much broader. You're gonna get the same amount of sustain at 10%. percent you are gonna get it 100%. They don't suck your tone. You can run them anywhere in your chain. Most people just go straight into the volume pedal, but say you're running some kind of weird effect setup. Say you're doing some kind of stereo setup and you wanna have your volume pedal after your delay or after some type of overdrive or whatever you wanna do, you can do that with an active pedal. There's no pot inside. There's no pot to go bad. So you're never gonna have to replace a pot. This is how an active pedal is. It's just the next level up. If you're looking for that kind of super consistent, super warm, super transparent sound, I would highly consider getting an active pedal. What are the cons of using an active pedal? One, they're expensive. If you're on a budget, a couple hundred dollars on a volume pedal, I mean, may seem a little outlandish, but you know, it's kind of geared towards more of a pro player that once you start using one, like I said, it's hard to go back, but they are expensive. So it's something you're gonna have to budget for, something you're gonna have to think about, especially when we get up to like the Talonics. What else? They have to be powered. So you're gonna have to plug it in. It's not just something like your regular passive volume pedal where you can just plug it in and go. You are gonna have to power supply and keep it powered. They are somewhat fragile compared to a regular passive pedal. It's not going to break right out of the box or anything like that. They're extremely well made, but it's not something I would throw around as willy nilly as your old passive show bud pedal, just tossing it into the case. It's something you're going to want to be a little bit careful with, and that's because there's a lot of components inside that are not made of metal. On a passive pedal, everything on there is pretty much either made of string or metal. And with the active stuff, you're going to have various electronics working inside, so it's something you're going to want to be careful with. So, anyway, this is kind of what's out there. I hope that I've given you some information that can help you make a decision on what to get. Any of these options. I've covered are very good options. If you're just getting started out and you're on a budget, I would just say use what you have. Don't worry about having to spend a ton of money on something that you may not need yet. Focus on your plan and use what you have. But anyway, I think that about covers it. So, you know, a lot to look at here, but hopefully you can make a little bit of a better decision. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can always find me at TexasSteelGuitars.com. So stick around and I'll see you next time. Take care.